You are listening to the Kingdom Masterclass Podcast, where business and the anointing flow together to build God's kingdom. To stay connected, visit podcast.z5info.com. God has a plan. God has a purpose. He knows how things are going to evolve and he prepares you. So if you think like you got to get prepared, if you think things are coming ahead a few months from now, God wants to bless you now. God wants to prepare you now. Uh, He's waiting on you. He's not, you know, you're not waiting on him. Okay. Uh, You know, I believe, you know, uh, you know, last week, whenever we were at, um, you know, camp meeting, um, you know, it really made me reflect on, you know, how much we've been speaking to vision and really how five years and a half ago, you know, I was in, in a service just like a lot of you were in services, you know, and how five uh, years and a half ago, you know, it was just a desire of doing things differently, a desire of doing things right, a desire to really change you know, change and make a difference in our generation. And really, uh, I said it many times, and I'll say it again, the best place to make business with God is in your heart. That's the best place to do it. That's the best, you know, you don't need to, you know, you can press in. The best place you can press in is in your heart because then you become really hungry. And then, you know, you begin to, you know, harvest the plans and the purpose that God has for you. And so, you know, I remember, you know, those five, uh, five years and a half ago, you know, me, me really just closing my eyes and, and, you know, I had, a, you know, a righteous indignation, a really righteous indignation of, of, you know, of what I've seen in the years, you know, of, of everything that I've became aware. A lot of, you know, I love, you know, I love this, you know, this, this saying that, you know, it says a lot of people know, and I think Jonathan Shettlesworth says this, a lot of people don't know when they fall asleep, but everybody knows when they wake up. And I was awakened to a reality. I was awakened to, I was able to see by the Holy Ghost really what was happening five years ago. And in order, you know, before God, you know, empowers you, he awakens you. Because why do you want to be a, a, a giant sleeping? You know, so he wakes you up. He shows you. He empowers you for the things that are ahead. And before he empowers you, he gives you a vision because you are the one that gets to decide whether you do it or not. You know? And so, you know, I remember it was five uh Five years ago, five years and a half ago, I remember I was just sitting in service and and I just really closed my eyes and I began to I begin to be very indignated about how the talent, how the world has built their their temples, their kingdom on the backs of Holy Spirit fire Christians. And how they're really creating and advancing their kingdom. And on our end, we were just on the back burner. We were not being the ones that were going to change the, 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 the whole demographic. We were not the ones leading. And so I remember that I began to see how these companies are ri- were rising up. You know, Christian companies, you know, Christian Christian principles but it's not enough to be a christian you got to be a holy spirit filling fire christian that's what's going to make the difference because is the power and the and the power in money there's there's levels to money there's levels to money and and this is this will become more prevalent as we continue to move in into what god has already given us what god has already empowered us and entrusted us with but in in the world you know the entrance, uh, the entrance of of everything is 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 money. Money, you know, money is the power that will that you know that empowers people to have influence over people. And money always is going to come first to people. And so the wor- the way that it works in the kingdom of darkness is is you are looking for something, and then you have to you exchange being happy for these materialistic things and that's what I didn't that's what gives you happiness you know is you acquiring first 
the things that you're believing, the things that you want. And only when you get them, then you're really happy. You know, and that's why God doesn't do that with you. God does not give you what you want, what you're looking for. He doesn't do that because if not, your eyes will never be on him. Will always be on the on the on the natural. Would always be on the things. So people are always asking, "Man, I'm believing for this. I'm believing for that. I'm believing for this." But first, you you have to realize that God wants to make business with you, and God wants to create a relationship with you. He has to become first in your life, and then you'll begin to get everything else. And so, you know, in the world. The power of money. In the, world, in the world, there is money, and the money brings a lot of bad things on it. And then the money in the world is only, you know, a step into influence, only a step into power. The power of darkness. That's really the power to influence people into deviating them into the lies of this world, you know, to deceive as many people. And so when you... You know, you've heard men were, was not the sign to store money without God. Man was not the, the, the sign to store millions, hundreds of millions or billions without the power of the Holy Ghost. Because when you go into the world and you begin to make this kind of money, then you begin to bow to the power of money. Because if not, the power of money will continue to depower you and take everything away. You take an example of Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is a Christian company, but the moment that came to stand up for abortion, the moment that came to stand up for the narrative of, of you know, of what, hap- what was happening with Trump, they begin to back up because they still don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. That's whenever you see why Christian companies begin to catch up after they hit the $100 million mark, the $200 million mark, the $500 million mark, then they acquire the money, but they still need to bow to the power to the power of darkness, because if not, they're going to be canceled. If not, they're going to be coming against them, and they won't be able to take it if they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's why I begin to understand what God is raising an army of people that are not only Christians, but are Holy Spirit filled and fire Christians, because we carry the power of God. We carry the power in the natural and in the supernatural. That's why the companies, the, the Lord showed me that one, one was for $50 million that came out of the river, which we surpassed that company this year. Praise God. We already surpassed how much that company made in one year. You know, this company was a Christian company. This company was a guy that would come to church once in a while. But the, the Holy Ghost and fire culture was not there. It was the money culture. And you could be a Christian all you want. You could, you could give here and there. You could, you could make some money and you could be behind the vision. But giving is just, a, it's just a pacifier if you don't have the Holy Ghost. F- giving will only make you feel okay for a little bit until you really come down to what really people need, what they're looking for, you know? And so if you're not... If you don't, you know, if you don't understand what is as a company having a Holy Ghost and fire culture, then you begin to keep track with money. But then whenever you get to a certain level of money, you're going to find out that what you need is the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost to sustain you, to maintain you and to take you where no man could go where no man could go. And so, you know, five years and a half ago, I began to really see how, you know, this company was risen up and then, you know, he takes all the talent and brings them into a culture that is not a Holy Ghost and fire culture, is not a kingdom of heaven first culture, and then you begin to have good results for a year, for two years, for a third year, and then on the year three and four, everybody backslides, everybody, everybody. The entire people were taken off of the call of God in their life. People left the church. People, you know, were in drugs. People were in alcohol. All kinds of things, you know. And so you begin to analyze things, 
And you begin to see why is this happening? If it was, you know, some maybe a Christian guy, you know, or, or maybe a guy that went to church, you know. And so you begin to realize that at the highest level, if you're not allowing the Holy Ghost to come and be poured in into the culture, if you're not allowing the Holy Ghost to really be the one that leads you and empowers you to establish God's kingdom, if that's not the first and most important part of of how you're establishing God's kingdom and business, it will not work. It will not work because we requ- require power. Money is just an entry of power and influence. So you're going to have the influence and the power of money, or you're going to have the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost that takes everything away. The Holy Ghost takes over everything. Money bows to Jesus. Money bows to the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no match to the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe we have enough firepower in this company to be able to all give the $50 million that the Mormons gave last in the last five years. We have enough firepower in this company to all give what they have done in 20 years. We'll be doing it, we'll do it in one year. You have to begin to believe this way. You have to begin to stand up this way because God is doing a mighty thing in his body. God is doing a mighty thing, and he's raising our people. And I know that after this meeting, we're going to begin to see the biggest recruiting, the biggest biggest migration from the world of business into the world of the Holy Ghost and fire business, and we're going to be ready to bring everybody in. We're going to be ready. We are ready. We have to be ready. And so I begin to see how this was lifted up at a certain level. And then you heard me talking about, you know, our, our testimony. And I'll, I'll go a little bit more deep into it. You know, it was, you know, I was part, you know, I, I seen everything. I saw the two things. And then, you know, the next company began to be, you know, when this person failed, you know, because he sold the company and he grabbed, you know, I believe he sold the company for about $50 million dollars. I think he probably took home about 10, 15 million dollars. And then everybody, everybody fell, everybody left, everybody was taken out, you know, in that company. And then this other company begins to grab the other group of people that were left, and then they plug them in into this new company. This new company begins to do well because of the Christians. You don't understand what kind of power and anointing is upon your life. The world does. That's what they have created vehicles for for Christians to jump in you know for the world the talent the talent the talent you know they really create vehicles to recruit as much talent as they can that's how they ended up with the best singers that's why they ended up with the best football players that's why they ended up with the best minds with the best scientists with the best creators with the best media with the best everything but I'm telling you there is something greater than the best of the world that can offer, and that's men and women with a vision, with the power of the Holy Ghost inside of them, you'll be able to produce more than they do. And so, you know, when we have, when we have, uh, you know, when you, when we have a vision, when, when, whenever we begin to see what God wants to do, you begin to move in a very, in a very confident way into the future. You begin to really move in a confident way whenever God begins to show you the the inner works of how the world does things, you know? And everything is really just based on biblical principles, you know, because, you know, it's very built on hard work ethic. It's very built on what you think, what you speak, and what you act upon. And, And in the world, you have to be positive. In the world, you have to work hard. In the world, you got to keep your mind in the, in the right place. But that only, that's only going to take you so far. That's only going to take you so far until you get to a place that you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Because if not, you're not going to be able to do what God has called us to do in the next 10, 20 years because it's going to require power. And it's going to require the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. And so... You know, then they grab this group of people that comes from the, you know, this company, this alarm company, this alarm company, 
that, you know, actually it was a cable company. The first one was a cable company. So this cable company began to sell cable door to door, you know? And then it was this new technology called Fios. You know, it was a Fios technology. You know, we would sell, you know, cable internet. It was the first speed, uh, fast speed internet through fiber optic in Florida or in around the United States. So we all became very good at talking to people. We became really good at selling. We became very good at uh, bringing up structures. We became really good at, um, you know, creating teams. And then, and then, you know, I saw the whole structure, how it was a structure. And everything was based on money, based on gifting, based on talent. Nothing based on a godly character. Nothing, nothing. But they were able to begin to build this strong structures with these three things. And they were able, the guy was able to sell the company for about $50, $50 million. And so then they grab this other group of people, which the main guy... Sells a company for $50 million. He probably keeps about $15 million, And then nothing comes back to the church. There was nothing that came back to the church. Why? Because he used all of the workers to build his wealth. And because he was on the top, he was not, he was not committed. And he was definitely, he was not going to tithe. He was not going to give, you know. He was going to give a few things to somebody and then to appease his soul. And then he was, he was going to go about his business. But it was the anointing that empowered him to do that. See, he used, he, he created a vehicle and he put the anointing in it to take him where he wanted to go. And then he would just drop everybody off and then he kept going to, on the sunset. Well, that was not the case. You know, the guy died at 57 years old about three months ago. And this is, this is I'm talking to you about these things, you know. And so this is not the first time that this has happened. This is not the first time that somebody tried to, you know, uh, in the name of, of God, trying to bring people in, trying to get people to work to really, you know, advance, you know, the Christians to help them out, you know, to give them a job so they can tie themselves. This is not the first time. This is why we got a lot of heat at the beginning from the river. Because there is a lot of companies that came that wrapped up just like this that say they were going to do something, but they never did it, you know? And so, you know, I don't get mad about that. I, I, I never really did because I knew what was the reason why God had me doing this. This was not my, this was not my idea. This, I was prompted by the Holy Ghost to ask for this. And, and I didn't really know what I was asking for. I really didn't. I really didn't. I'm glad I didn't because if not, I maybe would have doubted and maybe would have said no. But I'm glad I didn't. And that's why I just moved by the Holy Ghost because, you know, you just got to move forward. You know, what's coming, what's coming, and you're always going to be ready. If God's put you in a place to walk upon, whatever is coming for you, you're going to be able to take it. You're going to be able to overcome it. You're going to be able to, to come out victorious every time because God put you in a place where you already are an overcomer. You already are, are an overcomer in everything that he has placed you in. And so, you know, then they grab this other, you know, group of people. And then this other group of people come into it. And then, and then they, begin to, they begin to give a little bit more space to the Christians, you know. They, they allow them to begin to form their own region. You know, they begin to allow them to be their own managers, their own regions. So now the Christians that had a really bad taste from this place, they're taken up again, and they're taken into the church back again because everybody was taken out. So then the Lord grabs everybody and plays them back into the church again to heal them, to restore them, to give them again another opportunity the, the Holy Ghost begins to rebuild them. The Holy Ghost begins to empower them. The Holy Ghost begins to repair them because God loves them and because there is a plan and a purpose for their life. And so they're all taken up again and they're taken back into the church. And so then begin to be rehabilitated again, you know, the Christians. And up until the last camp meeting, I saw people that, you know, that was about probably 15 years ago, I saw people, the last group of people that were taken out and really went into the world, the last two of our group came back to Jesus about three months ago. So it took him 15 years to get back though. It took him 15 years. 
and obviously a lot of their lives being, you know, set back, you know, you know, destroyed families, you know, everything. And so, you know, but I know that God's, God's on the move. God's, God's, God's already given us something that is really going to transform everything, you know. God has already placed something in, in this place for the world to see, for the world to see. We will be the, the example for what Holy Spirit Film Fire companies are going to do. And so this second group of people, we all move to, the, to this company. We all of a, all moved to this second company. And this company was a little bit more clever. This company was like, these people are great. These people are the leading in, in sales. They're the leading in structure. They're the leading in anointing to create the wealth, meaning making sales. These people are leading in sales. We need to create something for them so we can begin to continue to benefit from them. You know? And so then... They grabbed this group and they literally sold us because it was a, we went from cable to alarms, to the alarm industry. It was a group of us. So they grabbed us all. They gave us all a job. They, they, they gave us a better product. They gave us a better vision. They gave us a better pay scale. They gave us better incentives. They gave us better, you know, better swag, you know. You know, nicer hoodies, nice in shirts, nicer shirts, nicer hats, you know, you know, nicer watches with at that time were Invictus, and Victus are not nice watches anymore, but that's what they sold us on back in the day, you know? And so we were like, oh, let's go. And then we all went in it. And this time around, they gave a little bit more space to the to to the Christians. Okay. Let him. Oh, this guy is selling. Come over here. Begin to speak. Begin, begin to talk. Begin to do this. And so then, you know, this, this little alarm company, you know, was looked at, at for like to the biggest alarm company really in, in, in the United States. And this company, I think at that moment was worth maybe, I would say about a hundred million dollars. That company was worth a hundred million dollars. And then they saw this little company where we were all in, me and a group of friends. And then, you know, the business people who run this little company, right, they, they supposedly make some bad moves and they left this company to the mercy of this big company. And so then this big company comes and says, hey, we're going to save the day and we're going to buy you. We're going to acquire you, you know. And so this company... Uh, ends up acquiring the little tiny uh, alarm company and this big company that at that moment was a hundred million dollars. Then you know the whole group of people that was in this company is acquired by this big company, and then five uh, no, and then about seven to ten years later, that company is worth three billion dollars after they acquire the anointing. The anointing is not for sale, ladies and gentlemen. It is not. It is not. It is not. But because you carry the anointing inside of you, you have to understand that your gift and your talent is not for sale. And a lot of people sell themselves based on money, based on an opportunity, based on, and on their own wishes and desires, based on a promotion. And that's what we were all trained to do. But these two companies, both of them were Mormon companies. They were both Mormon companies, and they, they work, and their leadership is 100% Mormons. They give the jobs to all the Christians, but the leadership, the money at the top is 100% Mormon. So what are the Christians doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? Are we looking to promote our people? Are we looking to create people that we can raise up with a character, with a vision, with, with a foundation and really to teach them to raise them up and put in them in places where they can influence people, you know? And, and so then this company comes and, 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 and really acquires, acquires, you know, this little company. They acquire all of us. Now, because they have the resources, the little team that came in of about 70 people turns into 2,000 people within that short period of time. And then they begin to, to produce the best leadership in the company. 
the best leadership in the company. But, you know, they allow them to share a little bit of the gospel. They allow to, the Christians to have a little bit more of influence into it, but never get all the way to the top. Because that's where the anointing comes from. The anointing always comes all the way from the top. The influence is always going to come from where you get to run things. And so, you know, they begin to, you know, they begin to come and then, you know, they again, they begin to take all the people, all the anointing people, all the anointed people, and they're beginning to plug in in these markets. The company begins to grow. I was talking to my friend, you know, uh, which he just left that company about a week ago, you know, after working for them for 13 years. He just left last, last week the company. And he was the one, the leading one producer in that, in that company. The leading one. I think they produced about 35,000 accounts last year. 35,000 accounts. They produced revenue over, over probably $150, $200 million within four months. This is what the anointing does, guys. This is what the anointing does whenever there is a structure, whenever there's a goal and there is a vision. And then they were able to produce that much. And so, you know, they begin to, you know, they begin to, you know, let us in. They begin, a, they begin to, you know, let them run the region, you know, the region, their amount of people. And they begin to, you know, let them have little services over here, you know, little services over there. But, but that's about it. You cannot be witnessing. You cannot be a Christian on the streets. You could be a Christian on Sunday morning, but you cannot be a Christian the, the six days out of the week. And so, and so, you know, obviously, we begin to do all of this. We begin to work. I mean, they teach us how money is made, how you can go and begin to, you know, negotiate yourself. And, you know, if you have a group of people, you grab your group of people and you go and you, and then you go and negotiate with other companies. And, you know, we begin to sell ourselves to, from company to company for $100,000, $200,000, $50,000. Was just, it was just corrupting, you know, corrupting really how business is supposed to be, you know, but that's how they do it. You know, they begin, to, they begin to buy each other and sell each other and then stab everybody in the back. And, you know, some people, th there's a group that sticks together. And, and even in the world, the group that, stays, that sticks together is the one that makes the most money. But, you know, one of the problems in, in the body of Christ is in the name of the Holy Ghost, everybody is a Rambo and they go do whatever they want to do. The biggest companies in the world work out of honor, covenant, and submission to authority and unity. That's the way the biggest work, uh, you know, companies in the world work. They don't work any other way. And so, you know, so, you know, then these companies begin to be built at the highest level, at the highest level of media, at the highest level of production, at the highest level of structure, at the highest level of management. And then begin, they begin to create a channel to recruit over five to 6,000 reps. And then all of these reps are working under this structure so the, the, the main people, the main people are able to grab all of the finances and then disperse them and get back, uh, get behind not only their church, not only their, 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 you know, their ministry, you know, because let me tell you one thing about Mormons, every single Mormon tithes. They have it almost automatically out of their bank account. They audit you. If you're a business man and, uh, and you're a Mormon, they audit you to make sure that you're tithing the right way. And that's just part of the culture. No wonder, have you seen any Mormon building? Buildings, they look like monuments, don't they? Are they peddling, uh, you know, are they like asking for people to give? And all? No, they don't because they created a system where business people are the ones that are bringing everything. And then they teach them unity. And whenever they build the biggest companies, they put every single of their brothers and sisters into the leadership position. So all the big money goes to one place and one place only. And that's their religion. If you don't really understand how this works, you're going to be like, oh, man, I'm going to go establish God's kingdom. I'm going to go work over here, and I'm going to get an extra $2 an hour. 
I'm not saying that that's a bless, not a blessing. I'm just saying that you can begin there, but you got to go somewhere further. I'm saying that you, you, you don't have to stay there. I'm saying that God's going to bless you and he's going to put you in charge. He's going to put you in the places where you can be a big influence for God's kingdom. That's what you're designed to do. There are not many people like you. Understand that. And our job is to raise up a group of leaders that understands how God's kingdom is established and is led in the world of business. That's our job. That is the half side of the body of Christ that's been asleep. The minister's been doing their job. That's the reason why we're alive. That's the reason why we're saved because the ministry of the gospel has done its job. The fivefold ministry has done its job. So now that we are raising up, now they've raised up the fivefold ministry that can go into business and we will take over together. You know, if you don't understand how really this, the whole dynamic works, you're just going to be thinking like the normal, the normal way of Christianity within the four walls. You know, where, where, you know, where the, the pastor preaches and then, and then everybody goes and everybody does and then when everybody gets out of the church, they go work for everybody else to build everybody else's kingdom. That's how it happens. And the, and the, and the Christian business end up compromising at the highest level because they don't allow the part of the Holy Ghost to come in. You know, what are we? Do we want to be a five, uh, $3 billion company or we want to be a Holy Spirit fill and fire company? That's what we want to be that establishes God's kingdom. So you begin to see how everything changes. You begin to see how everything transforms, you know, how everything really begins to, you know, give you a new vision of what God wants to do. And so then this company really begins to, you know, begins to bring all of the people, begins to give them, you know, begins to give them incentives, begins to give them trips and everything. And then they make them tremendously loyal to them. Because that's how they understand how kingdom is built. But they don't make them loyal to the Lord. They don't make them loyal to the anointing. They don't make them loyal to the great commission. So now you begin to understand why is it so important what we're doing. Because in business, the only way that you're really going to be able to break through and come through is understanding that at the highest level, our goal and our vision is to raise up an army. A raise up an army of people that have character, a godly character that is able to build something greater, to be able to bring as many people, as many people into, into, the, into a vehicle so we can, we can travel faster and to get to the places where God has called us to be, to be the voice of Jesus. That's why, you know, this is only a vehicle for us to get quicker where we need to go. And so if you begin to understand how this works is, is now really God is creating a, a vehicle where we can bring as many people as we can to teach them these things and create a culture to be, to, to, to instill in them that their first or most important thing is that they understand how how God's kingdom is established on this earth. Until you don't see yourself as committed, until you don't see yourself as given, until you don't see yourself as every single second of the day like a minister of the gospel in where you are in your job, you'll never see the supernatural abundance of God in your life. You'll never see it. You'll never see it because you are, you are in a fight thinking of what ministry looks like for you where God has you alive today in the place that he has given you today so you can work and you can establish God's kingdom where you are today. Where you are today. And what's coming, it's coming. What's ahead, it's ahead. But you are a powerful man and woman of God, where you stand today. Where you stand today, that is your pulpit. That is your, 
your place of influence. And that's why the body of Christ is so absent in the realm of business because you feel like if you're not on a pulpit preaching, you are not doing the Great Commission. Who told you that? Uh, when are you a minister? Only when you're speaking? Only when you have a group of people just listening to you? Or when you're doing God's will every single day? That's what it is. Until you don't see yourself as serious as the ministers of the gospels that are preaching, that are like Pastor Rodney, like Jonathan Chettlesworth, like Brother Ankit. If you don't see yourself as that man in the job and the place that God has put you today, you don't have it yet. You don't understand the full understanding yet of how God begins to raise people up out of nothing. God begins to give you influence in the place where God has placed you in. Every place that God has given you is for you to take over with the anointing that he has given you. And that's why it's going to begin to, the Sundays are going to become Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because people are finally going to understand how powerful you are every day out of the week. Every day out of the week, where you are, you are anointed where you are. You will be raised up where you are, where you're sitting today. God will raise you up. We will have great churches. We will have the greatest ministries. We will have it. But the job will not be done unless you see yourself as a minister. Unless you see yourself as somebody that carries Jesus and is able to make a great impact on a daily basis. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? So the, now we go back to, you know, what I seen. And I seen how these companies raise up and then all the influence, all the gifts, all the talents of the Christians were for building you know, these temples and to build, you know, wealth for, for the world. And so that's whenever I see, you know, these two companies rise up and take him from the anointing. They took from the anointing. They built what they built out of the anointing. They built what they built not only out of the anointing, putting God's people to work under it, because how was Egypt built anyway? On the hands of who? On the backs of who? You know? And so that's why God has bringing you out of the kingdom of darkness into light. And so, you know, then I, that's whenever I begin, that's whenever I said, Lord, if you allow me to do, if you allow me to do, if you allow me to be, this is what I ask. If I see, because when God shows you something, your heart breaks and you want to do something about it. Until you don't want to do something about it, about the situation is, you're not a... You know, you're not even fitted to do anything. You can never be angry about anything that you're not doing. Anything about to change, to transform. And so, and so that's whenever I ask and I said, Lord, if you allow me to, if you allow me, I mean, I'm telling you. I say, if you allow me to be the third company that raises up of this place. That's what I said. And I was at the river five years and a half ago. I said, if you allow me to be the third company that rises up out of this place, I promise you, I'll bring the money back to, and before I say you, the Lord told me, what you've asked me, I offered to many. Nobody wanted to do it. But because you ask me, you can have it go. Every time God really speaks into my life, I really, I'm telling you, I've seen the greatest move in my life, the greatest miracles in my life. You're anointed for a reason. You're anointed for a reason. And I know a lot of you are going to be the brave ones that are going to pick up a lot of things that people didn't want to do for decades. And you're, you're the one, you're the chosen one to do it. Because God sees the least and he makes them the most. And that's what was the, the greatest thing that I got to see in, in, in that time. You know, I really, the Lord answered me immediately. 
Fast tracking to last week, you know, fast tracking to, uh, to last week, I was, uh, I was sitting with Pastor Rodney, I was sitting with Pastor Rodney and, you know, and, and you know, uh, Pastor Eric, and then, and then, you know, I show them, I show them, you know, how we, you know, track souls and how we track, you know, sales and how we track all of these things, you know, and so, and so he just, just was, just was kind of in a way taken for a second and he just pauses for a second and he says and he looks at Pastor Eric and he said, Pastor Eric, this is what we've been waiting for for 25 years. It only took us 25 years for somebody to get it. Because imagine how many people were given the opportunity to lead. How many uh, people were given the opportunity to do something and they didn't do anything with it. They were afraid, they didn't have, they were not ready, there was not empowerment, there was not revelation, you know. And so that's why I'm just so thankful that, you know, uh, whenever I, my, you know, whenever I listen to the Lord, I begin to, to really move and be obedient to how he told me how to move, where to spend, where to go, who to work with. It's very important, you know. And so every, every time the Lord, um, the Lord Every time the Lord gives you a vision, every time the Lord puts something in your heart, he quickly brings somebody to minister you into that area. Because God is always going to partner up with, with men to, to, do, to get the job done. Jesus had to be empowered and under, you know, get baptized by John the Baptist to receive his empowerment. And so every time you're asking, you know, and so I begin to not only be plugged in in the river, I begin to listen, to listen, you know, to the teachings of Pastor Rodney. And, you know, really, you know, uh, you know empowering me in believing, empowering me in faith, empowering me in, in being secure, to be cof- confident in what God has for me and what he has for you. And then, you know, the Lord brought me, I, I began to do things differently. I began to, you know, I began to make different, different adjustments. Up until today, you know, one of the things, because I wanted to be so different, you know, I wanted to do completely the opposite of what the other companies were doing. Up until today, we've not hired one person from another solar company in five years and a half. You know, we have our friend over here, he was about five minutes in a solar company, and I told him, have you started knocking doors for them? Have you started doing all that? He said, no, okay, no, then you're allowed. He was only there about five minutes. If he would have t- knocked a door, it would have been another story, you know? I wouldn't have revelation from heaven to let him in, you know? <laughs> Look, I know that at a certain point, we're going to open the doors, but to many things, you know, of what God is, is, is blessing us with. But you have to understand that whenever you're building, you have to protect the foundation. You have to protect the culture. You have to protect what you're building. You have to protect it. You really have to protect it. And so, you know, that was the instruction because I wanted no men to take credit for what God was doing. You know? I, I, didn't, want, I, I didn't want anybody to take credit for God, what God was about to do. You know, we could begin to get people from all walks, all backgrounds, everything, you know. And so, you know, we begin to really, we begin to be, really realize that, you know, the opportunity has been there for a while. God has been ready to pour in. God's been ready to promote. God's been ready. But it's not until you get a revelation of, of, uh, of the Holy Ghost and you begin to act on that revelation and you begin to give fruit off of that revelation that you begin to actually have, have seed inside of you that you could give unto other people to raise them up. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. You know, it has to work in you and so can work through you. And so God is really putting us in an amazing position to where we can begin to build people up and not only in solar, but in many industries, you know, many, many industries, because is the foundation of the Great Commission applied that is going to make a business great, is the foundation of a Holy Ghost and fire culture 
flowing freely through the company that is going to make this company very effective and be at the highest level in the business world if if you let it move whenever whenever i start you know having these meetings i remember i remember the lord was very specific for me. You have to understand something. When I came here, I did everything completely the opposite that I did. And many of you are going to begin to have to do completely the opposite of what you've ever done. Because if not, you're not going to really see the hand of God in your life. Doing the opposite, meaning you, when you, you begin to do the opposite, you begin to trust in God and not in you. Whenever you begin to really change all of the things that you've ever done, you are now officially working by faith and not by sight. By sight is what you've known and what you've done up until today. By faith is completely taking new steps into where God wants to take you. That's why it's so scary. That's why there's such of a hesitation to move to one way or the other because you're moving from the known to the unknown. But the unknown, you find the greatest faith of heaven because that's the greatest decision you could ever make. The greatest decision that you can, the greatest step that you could ever make in your life is a step of faith. And not relying on your own understanding, but lean on the Lord. Whenever you begin on the Lord, that's whenever you begin to make the greatest decisions you've ever made in your life. And you begin to now be a candidate to, of an anointing that will empower you to take over industries because you no longer are relying on your strength, but you're relying on God's strength and God's power where he has placed you. That's whenever you begin to be a person. You begin to be somebody that is qualified. You begin to be somebody that is truly qualified to go where nobody wants to go because now you're being led by a supernatural power and you're being lifted up into a, a corner to be a light because you decide not to rely on you, but you decide to rely on him, you are going to have to do everything completely the opposite that you've ever did it in your life to be able to achieve the results you've never gotten in your life. That's, that's, that's the greatest thing. That's what I begin to do. And I had only $250 in my pocket. Well, I owed, I owed those $250 to somebody, but, you know, I'm like, still mine is in my pocket, you know what I mean? That money's still mine, you know? As soon as it doesn't leave my pocket, and I mean, that's somebody else's now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you begin to, to understand. You begin to see how the Lord begins to take the scales of your eyes and you begin to see that what you've been doing has not necessarily been the greatest thing. It's just what you've known. You didn't know. You know, but now when your eyes are open, you are excited every single day, every single minute, every single hour because now you know what it takes to build something. And let me tell you something, whenever you begin to build in faith, it's only a matter of time before you see the greatest miracles than your eyes have ever seen. You know, do not give up on good, do and good doing because in due season you will reap a harvest. And so, but everything that the Lord does, everything that the Lord does, it's, quickly depending on your willingness to make the, the steps. The quicker you make the steps, the quicker you're blessed. The quicker you see the supernatural. The quicker you see it. See, we're not in a place of waiting anymore. We're lagging be behind. We have to make up a lot of ground. We have to. You have to recognize that there's a ground that needs to be plowed and we need to go fast. And that's going to require the supernatural anointing to be able to make leaps and bounds, big steps into where God has for us. And so, you know, I, 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 really, I really begin to understand that 
why I begin to be so different, why I begin to make everything so different, you know? And, and I knew that, you know, whenever I was working, first I was very diligent with my job. I was very diligent with my job. I was very, very diligent with my job. I began to be very diligent. I began to think what way. I began to speak one way. And I began to act in one way. Before I was all over the place. Maybe yes, maybe no, maybe tomorrow, maybe here, maybe over there. But I became a consistent man. When you make a step of faith, you become a consistent man because you're not relying on your old devices. You're relying into what God's showing you uh, right now. Would you begin to walk in this direction and there is no going back? When you make a step of faith, there is no going back. When you make a step of faith in the Holy Ghost, there is no going back. You got to move forward. Things are going to get worked on the way, but there is no going back. Once you see the truth, you cannot unsee the truth. And that's what step of faith does. A step of faith puts you in a place of really truly seeing what God has for you. And then you begin to get more confident into the steps of faith that you need to take. And so, you know, I remember, you know, I began to make different decisions. And the Lord was very clear to me. He said, I'm, after seven years, and this, I mean, after seven months, this is what I did for seven months. Seven months, I became the best of what I was doing. I began to really rely on the anointing, you know, practically applying the anointing. That's what I did. And practically applying the anointing was that I would do my job while being grateful and thankful and knowing that God was, had, had a bigger plan for me. I begin to know how to apply the word of God in my life. I begin to have an answer for every thought of defeat in my head. I had 10 answers of being an overcomer in my head. And so I begin just to speak life. I begin to speak life. I begin to work. And for seven months, I was by myself. I became the best of what I was doing. I became the most consistent. I became the person that would go. I began to be the one that were no longer. I mean, I would go and sit in, in, in bars to go watch soccer games. I mean, I wouldn't drink. But, you know, I was in the bars watching soccer games. I was knocking doors. And I would just, you know, take a break at 3.30 to go eat wings, you know. And then I would go uh, watch a soccer game. And I will reward myself with a soccer game. You know, I would be like, oh, I'm going to go watch it and here and there. And so it's been about six years since I watched a soccer game. So things that you used to do, you begin to change because you're just so focused. You know, you're just so focused. I was just so focused, so focused. And faith, real faith, real faith brings real focus. Real faith brings real focus on what God has put in front of you. You're no longer wandering in 10 directions. You're no longer hoping that one day you're going to be rich. You are no longer hoping that one day you're going to be in a ministry. You no longer hope. You're not, you no longer do none of those things, but you begin to focus on, on, on building God's kingdom now. Faith gives you focus on what you need to do now. Because you already know what's going to happen. I already knew what was going to happen. I already knew what was going to happen. I knew that God told me to go. He said, you could have it go. And I went on that word. I already knew. I already knew what he said. And so I had faith and I had ultimate focus to continue to build. And trust me. Whenever in the six months that I was broke, in the six months that I had no money, everybody wants to go into the ministry whenever they're broke because then that's, they feel like that's when they feel the closer to Jesus. You know, when people are broke, you know, oh, man, there's nothing else to do. I lost everything because I was not preaching or I was not doing. No, you lost everything because you didn't have a godly character. That's why. You know, because the people in the world have everything. You know, and they're not necessarily preaching, are they? It's, it's, it's the principles. It's the principles that sustain you and maintain you. That's what it does. You know, you understanding, you know, how faith works and how we're building and how we're growing 
into what God said. I had a word. I know what he said. So whether I was going to be preaching in the pulpit, whether I was going to be, you know, working, it didn't matter. I knew what I, I heard from heaven. He said, go. And the good thing about it is I didn't, I didn't try to put God into a box of how he was going to work it out. How I end up speaking and sharing and churches and everything, it, you know, it was just based out of what the Lord said. All I wanted to do was just create a company to where really the, the, the money will come back to the Lord. That's what I wanted, you know, because I saw, you know, how every other kingdom was being built and the body of Christ was being left behind. And it's because we didn't have people, uh, Holy Ghost and Fire people in important places to where they could, they could be the ones who manage the resources, who manage the anointing, who manage the anointing and the natural is money. That's what you do. If you don't put yourself in a position to where you are the one that is steward in it, you know, you're not going to be able to make a big impact, you know. But you have to first know what's the heart that you need to have to be able to steward the great resources of this earth. It's all a matter of where your heart is because God's not going to give you something that is going to destroy you if you're trying to do it this way. And so, you know, really, that was my heart. My heart is to really to establish God's kingdom through what we're doing. And so, you know, we begin to see how, how everything begins to grow, how everything begins to, you know, move really, really fast. And so our job as a company is to create a Holy Ghost structure. We need to, we need to perform at the highest level, you know, we don't need to say that, oh, hey, we're going to go and do a crusade over here, and then the sales are going to go down to zero. Where is the anointing in that? Where is the blessing on that? How does that even work? You know? No, we're going to be able to say, hey, we're going send, to send a crusade on this end, and we're going to have a 1,000 people on the field, and we're going to have the greatest day of sales we've ever had that day. Because if we don't show up in the world like that, we're going to go back into the same things that in the name of serving God, people are broke. How does that even work? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And so that just shows you whenever people begin to see, uh, begin, you know, they still men of opportunity without knowing they're a men of opportunity because they think they, they're going to go serve in church and they're going to be viewed as holy. They're going to be viewed as serving the Lord, but then they're not producing into what God has placed into their hands. So how does that even work? You know, how does that even work? You're anointed every single day out of the week to do what God has called you to do. Therefore, everything that you touch prospers. You know, and so and so this is, you know, taking the company into another level of cult, another level of structure, another level of producing, another level of recruiting, another level of organization is how we're going to be able to cater the growth of God in our lives. We're going to be able to 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 really begin to see begin to create channels for super abundant blessing. If you don't have a, a channel of, of a coal center that is have the best system, the best scripts, the best coals, the best closing ratio, you're not going to be able to, to create a channel to get more, more sales through online. The same thing of, of, of direct sales. If we're not the best uh, giving people you know, their goals, their, their environment, their focus, their promotion, and make them understand that that's part of what, God's, what God is putting them to do in this time and this hour and make them to see that that's actually a ministry where you are going to be found faithful. People are just going to go out, you know, they're just going to be doing all kinds of things. They're not going to be focused. And so our job is to create a Holy Ghost you know, vessel to where multiple streams of God's blessing will come upon us. And that's why we need to become better at training. We need to become better at really giving people standards and focus because there is only a point where it's about talking about, oh, okay, the Lord's going to do it. The Lord's not going to do anything. He already did everything he needed to do for you. You have to do it. You have to be. You have to be the one to do it, you know? And so, you know, for people that are, that are, you know, 
If you're not, for people that have teams, for, for people that are running people, if, if you guys are not producing, you don't have the right, the, the, the right focus in front of you. There's only so many excuses that you could give. Was I the best man prepared to have a solar company? Absolutely not. I was not. I was probably the least qualified, but I knew the one thing I was good about. I was good about recognizing gifts and talents and people. My job was to give them structure, godly character, and then raise them up and put them in a position to do it. That's how you build great things. That's how you build great things. There is no excuse for anything. Because whatever you think you're lacking, God already sent somebody next to you or somebody is around you that you've failed to see because you're too focused on yourself. Begin to raise the people up. Begin to empower people. Begin to empower people, you know? I could do it, but I don't have to do it. There are people that God has called to do it. I'm not going to be the one running the media. I'm not going to be the one, although I like all of those things, God has already raised somebody up to do it, you know? The same thing with the structures. And that doesn't mean that you lay back and you don't do nothing. No, that means that you'll have more time to do what you're good at. This is what's going to make us go to the next level. I, you obviously can feel the anointing in what I'm telling you. You could obviously know that God is in this place. Now you need to raise up and do what God has called you to do. No more excuses, you know? No more excuses about anything. You know, you either make it happen and you don't. And if you don't, God's going to raise somebody up. That's, that's going to be on you. That's not going to be on me. That's going to be on everybody else. The reason why I continue to raise people up in every area and every level in any industry is so they could do what God has called them to do. And then you could be the one that is blessed to raise people up that are doing great things. You get to get that honor. You get to get that you know, that honor that you were able to raise somebody up and you loved him and you, you pour into him and now he's the leading one in sales. He's the leading one on structure. He's the leading one. He's the leading manager. He's the leading vice president. He's the leading, you know, gym, boxing gym around, around the United States. You get to be the one to do it. But people are too caught up on themselves. And, and then you're like, okay, Miguel, this sounds really good, but, you know, where is that in the Scripture? Go raise up disciples. That's what Jesus said. You know, come on, wake up. Don't be dumb about these things. We're dumb being dumb in the industries. We're done. We're done. What did Jesus say? Okay, Jesus said this. Go and raise up disciples, teaching them all the things that I taught you. And that's the beginning of the Great Commission. That's the beginning of a great business. That's the beginning of a great ministry. That is the beginning of a great man of God, raising people up. That's the beginning of of it. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Now you begin to see why running a team is more than a ministry that you could ever imagine. Now you get to see why. Now you can begin to see why you being a closer, you're the greatest one to have somebody to shadow you because you're raising somebody up. But everybody's waiting to raise people up from a pulpit, yell at them, and they don't do nothing with them. That's what there is a lot of small churches that do nothing for no one. And that's why Pastor Rodney is the, one of the greatest top three men of God in the world today because he raises people up. That's what he does. When you fall in love with God, you fall in love with people. And then it begins to help him, raise him up, help him, raise him up. That's how you begin to have. Seek the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of heaven? Raising and loving people because that's what God did with you, didn't he? So I'm done with people thinking that this is not a great commission. This is the greatest commission you could ever do. And if you fell here, you'll fail everywhere. Because it's about the heart. 
It doesn't matter what industry you're in. You got to have God's heart. If not, it's not going to work out. Can you say amen? This is what we are doing. This is how you raise and you take things to the next level with the great commission being at the forefront of everything that you do is raising up disciples. That's what you need to do. And then you have to show them the power of the Holy Ghost that is within them. The power of God that will go with them to do everything that God has called them to do. That's how we're going to get to 10,000 people in the next three years, by the way. Whenever every single one of you becomes a minister and understands that. Everybody wants to go and just, you know, playing a guitar. What is that going to do if you're not raising somebody else? What is that going to do? What is that going to do? You're always stuck on yourself. What is that going to do? You know? You know, teenagers all thinking, whatever, man. You know, we're, we're, I'm telling you things that I spoke to a $15 billion man, and he was taking more notes than you take. No wonder you're where you're at today. I've never seen anybody making a quicker adjustment than that billionaire. It makes sense why he's worth $15 billion and you're not. Get this stick out of your butt. Be, be really... Be really about it, you know? Somebody's got to tell you. I'm fine. I'm fine telling you. Trust me, I enjoy it, you know? If not, I wouldn't be telling you these things. I need to teach you these things. I need to tell you these things. Because if not, we begin in the same thing that people got touched. We need to, you know why it's so important to be under the anointing? Because if not, a lot of you would be dead right now. Facts. So you need to get people under the anointing while they get it because they're protected. But once you get it, you're empowered to go do it. You could be the anointing seven days out of the week doing what God has called you to do. You know? And that requires a humbleness of the heart to be able to be promoted. And the, uh, I mean, it says, see God, with all, uh, love you the Lord with all your heart, all your might, and all your strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, that fulfills all the law. And then seek the kingdom of God of all and all his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. That's what it says, right? I just told you what the kingdom of heaven and establishing looks like is you raising somebody up. And if you're incapable to raise somebody up where you are today, why are you asking for more? You don't know how to raise people up. I'm telling you how to establish God's kingdom. You got to raise people up. You got to teach them all. You got to teach them character. You got to teach them covenant. Beginning to raise people up is beginning to teach people covenant, honor, submission to authority, unity. Because without covenant, they don't know why you need to take over. Why? God has a covenant with you that he'll bless you. That all the blessing of Abraham is for you. You know? To be wealthy. To be rich in all areas, not only spiritually, you know? The spiritually is what keeps you there, and the anointing is what takes you there, you know? Empowers you there. But you need to teach people covenant. They are to be blessed for a reason. They're to be blessed because we are the real heirs of God's, of Abraham's rich blessing. It's ours. And the reason why we need to be wealthy is so we can go and take over the places. We need to take over the anointing everywhere. This is not about asking for money. This is about creating money. See how you change really quickly from asking to creating? You can create this by raising people up. This is how you do it. And then when we begin to raise people up, everybody will be, everybody continues to be built up to where they're supposed to be. If there is no build up, there is no rise up. I'm going to say that again. If there is no building up of people, there is not such of a you rising up into the place that God has called you to be. I'm going to say one more time. If you don't build people up, there is no rising up for you where God has for you. Because you're falling short of, of understanding what, where the wealth is. is in people. 
Love God, love people. Bring people to God. Love God, bring him, bring him to him. You need to be raising people up so you can go where God is designed for you to reach. That's why people are so caught up on their self. That's why there is now no more promotion because people stop raising people up. The people that God gave him, all of a sudden they don't like him. Oh, I'm not gonna spend time with them today. It's not about spending time with people, it's about loving people. In the little time that they have to spend with you, you need to encourage them, you need to love them, and you, you need to lift them up, you know? There is not such of a, the highest level in your life until you fulfill the great commission in your life, which is raising up disciples. Is this making sense? Is this is really sinking in why we are going to have the greatest growth of the company because you will understand that you're empowered to raise people up. You know, and people consistently are looking for ways to go and put themselves where they see themselves. You don't put yourself anywhere. God puts you there. The way that you get there is really loving people. Nothing was ever built without people, was it? So why are you hoping that you're going to go to your stage, to your call, to your business without raising people up? You know, without telling people, without loving people. How do you expect to do that? And then you need to know how you're multiplying yourself. If you're teaching people bad things, you're going to sow bad things. This will wake up the body of Christ, I'm telling you. Because it's not that people don't understand that there has to be a multiplication. People have to understand why there is a multiplication. Why there has to be a multiplication. And that's how the body of Christ will become and will come together. Is this good? Is this really, really giving you a deep understanding of the Holy Ghost of how you take a company from 100 to 1,000? This is how we do it. People are not going to be chasing smoking mirrors and dream and just smoky dreams anymore. You have the word of God as a foundation to take off from there. Everybody raise one. Everyone raises one. And you're in everything. That's why somebody asked me, hey, Miguel, you know, I want you to believe with me for a car. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't think that way. That's not how I think. That's not how my brain processes. You know, and they ask me because then I drive cars. They don't really understand what I did to get there. But it, uh, it's not a, I just, I don't really have to believe for cars. I have to think about how I want them. I just have to think about it. You know, I don't have to be asking about it because I am more focused in raising people up that nobody wants to raise up. And God's going to provide everything for me. If I need a vehicle, whatever I need at that point, when you begin to raise people up, God begins to give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to say this again. When you begin to truly raise people up into the great commission, into God's kingdom, God begins to fulfill the desires of your heart. You know, and so you have to begin to understand how this whole thing works. I am focused. I have a gift. I have a talent. I have a call and I have an anointing where I am placed today. Whatever place that you are today, God has called you exactly to the seat that you are today. Now, your job from that seat where you stand today is to establish God's kingdom, is to seek God's kingdom and all his righteousness from the seat that you sit today. That's it. There is no greater seat than where you're sitting today. There is no greater because you, God's anointing, God's favor, God's will, God's supernatural power is at hand where you sit today. Amen. You are 
matter where you sit today, empower men and women that will move the, gener- the needle in this generation. Where you sit today, and until you don't begin to see yourself that way, you're always going to be chasing, you know, a smoking dream. It'll disappear. You're always going to be chasing a carrot. You have the carrot in your hand. Do something with it. You know, that's how you begin to take off from where you were at. And that's why you need to be faithful. You need to work these things because you cannot teach people the things that are not working in you. You know, are you being faithful? Are you being transparent? Are you being honest? Are you being hard worker? Are you really checking your heart for your intentions every single time? The best way to check your hearts about intentions is really quickly coming back to the Great Commission, raising up disciples, teaching them the reason why we raise up disciples is so we can go to a lost and dying world and people can hear about Jesus. That's why we do what we do today. Isn't that the Great Commission? Isn't that what we're doing? So you begin to check your heart really quickly about all of the things, you know? And so then, you know, you begin to, we begin to form a, a character that is duplicatable, you know? Because we're not going to duplicate a bunch of goats, you know? Goats go to the left, not to the right, you know? So, you know, this is how it works. This is how it works. The seat where you are today, sitting down, every single one of you, that's the fastest way to go where God, where you're fulfilled, and you don't feel no longer that you're spinning wheels, is from that place to begin to raise up and establish God's kingdom. Whatever God has given you today, that's what you must multiply. That's what you must multiply. Feel marketers closers, managers, if you have a a dream that you're going to be a worship leader, if you have a dream that you're going to be a pastor, if you have a dream that you're going to be a business owner, if you have a dream that you're going to be in government, if you don't do right what you need to do right, it'll get further and further away from you because you think you're going there, but you're just, you're, you're in a, you're in a, you know, like a hamster in a spinning wheel thinking you're going somewhere you'll never get there. Don't you think this is why the body of Christ is just lagging back and God wants to really make it up to you? You need to understand these things. And I'm glad I can speak to these things from a business place because if it would have been from other churches, they would have kicked me out already. But you cannot kick me out. I have all of this. (laughs) You'll get kicked out. Right? Right? I believe this is why we're here. What do you think? Because it's the anointing, the fivefold ministry in business. Is the fivefold ministry of business. And, and, and my job is to be, bring this foundation of growth. You have to believe God and make business with God from where you are today. He'll multiply you there. You know, he'll multiply you exactly where you're at. It's a matter of you understanding how important you are and how much of a minister and how much God really already believes in you. He believes so much in you that he gave you the job that you have today. But many people don't even look at it that way. If I would have went like you guys see the things, whenever I came here, it was three of us. The two, one of them was fighting with me. The other one treated me like a criminal when I came here. And then we were all meeting in a couch. Who's going to do that? But I knew what God said. And I knew that God's word supersedes everything in the natural. You know? And so... Every single one of you needs to begin to really see yourself at this level. And this is how we're going to end up a thousand people at the end of the year, next year. You know, come on. And we're going to end up doubling the headcount. This year we'll have double, double before the year ends. Because every single one of you understand how much of a minister you are today, where you are today. You know, you are, you are to minister, you are to multiply yourself in every area. 
you know, and I see a sea of people beginning to come and getting behind this vision. I really see a vision. I really see a sea of people coming in and everybody taking their place. And this will be done within the next three years. And not only people are going to be raised up here, but so many businesses are going to come around. And this is going to be the model that they're going to use. This is going to be the structure that they'll use. And then the, the Christians, God's children, will take their place and will run what needs to be run and will prepare the church for the coming back of Jesus. What you don't understand is, is it's whenever Jesus, Jesus died, all of his disciples left. There was one man that claimed his body. And it was not a disciple, it was a businessman. It was a businessman that he discipled. And that was the one that picked up his body and, and gave him a proper burial for his resurrection. God's going God's gonna to raise up his children from the business place to really come, begin to come and clean and empower and lift up the church and get it ready for Jesus Christ for Jesus' return because it's God's business. Everything is God's business. Every single industry that there is in this world was inspired by God. Everything that this world has to offer is God's. It's God's. The enemy just has just created a counterfeit of what God has created and has intended to be. And so everything that we des decide to take over was already ours. Everything that we decide to take over was already ours. Media was already ours. The news was already ours. Sales were already ours. Industries were already ours. The best programs and systems were already ours because they were inspired by God and we're God's children and we're our true heirs with Jesus. Everything was already ours. Everything was already ours. And so... You know, you begin to begin to realize how important your job is. Now, you're not going to be like church or you're a solar. No, it's God's kingdom and we all have to get it done. Come on. It's God's kingdom and it's our job to do it. Every single one of you, every single one of us, it is. Because if not, you're confused and you're trying to go to things the old way. God wants to do a new thing in your life. And God's going to really just surprise everybody. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. This is going to take place and this is going to advance God's kingdom faster than anything in the history of the world. Do you hear what I'm saying? This will advance God's kingdom faster than anything, anytime in the history of the world. Because it's God's children finally taking their place before the return back of Jesus. A glorious, shiny church, not a defeated church. With what we have right now, we have enough firepower to take over industries and not only fund everything that Pastor Rodney is doing, but take in the name of Jesus at the, uh, the highest level around the world. You know? I mean, the, the, the Mormon that everybody's so happy about that working with, and they're like, uh, they, they, he's built 10 temples like that. We're going to build God's house. We're going to do it. We're going to God, build God's kingdom. It's our job. And God's going to raise up every single one of you into the place of the marketplace. And you'll carry the anointing in both realms. And you're going to be able to multiply yourself. And many, many, many people, millions, will become of, to Christ because of you. We're not going to be asking. We're going to be creating. Because everything was already given up to us. And the only one that we have our eyes to is the Lord. We're just asking him for the things that are already ours. Just I need this, I need this, I need that. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's already yours. 
It's already ours. This is already ours. And that's why I focus so much on the multiplication of you. If you multiply people, God will multiply your finances. Everybody wants to come and buy multiplication with an offering. It doesn't work that way. It's by establishing God's kingdom that you get blessed. And then then your heart is really fully understanding of why you're giving that offering. And then that's why that offering is multiplied. The offering is multiplied because you understand what, what establishing God's kingdom is. The great commission. The great commission. That's why. That's why you would ever be blessed. It says, seek the kingdom of heaven and, all, and his righteousness and everything will be added onto you. So we need to do it from the business place. We need to do it from the marketplace. You know, and it works everywhere, I'm telling you. It's God's business. You don't stop being a, a believer of Jesus when you go out to your job you are, or in, you change when you're on Sundays. It's every single day out of the week. If you don't take yourself as seriously as this man and woman of God, you're shortcoming yourself because you're not acting like that because you're not in that position. Well, you got to begin to act in now like who, how you think you're going to be. If you don't begin to carry yourself that way, we're raising up men and women that stand up tall and they're not just, you know, waiting for some opportunity to rise up. No, rise up now and when the opportunity comes, you're already going to be ready. Success comes with opportunity and ready, readiness come together. That's when success comes. Everybody wants to act like great whenever the opportunity comes. You won't be able to do it. You got to do it now. That's why whenever, you know, they ordain us and everything, you know, I've, I've been already doing this for five years and a half. Nothing really changed for me other than another level of empowerment, you know. Because on our heart, we're already with the ministry and everything. They just made it official in front of people. But we are ready, already. Our heart was already there. I didn't have to be ordained to be acting like it. I was already are. It just needed to be recognized in front of people and how much we help people, how much we raise people up. I mean, we are, as we stand, connected with six churches, and we're top three, big, top three biggest givers out of those, off, those, those churches. You know, top, top three givers. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine if this, you know, I mean, I don't even imagine what the other companies would have done. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it on, on an amazing level. You know, because we have it. We're givers. You know, we're givers. We're givers from where we are today. And I believe, I'm telling you, there's going to be, we're going to own news networks. We're going to own, you know, media. We're going to own the solar. We're going to own everything that is available for us. We're going to begin to raise up people in those industries. And I'm meaning, I don't care about me owning them. I'm, I mean about owning them for Jesus. You know, raising up people in every single industry so they can represent heaven because we know how it's done here. And the only way that I can continue to multiply is by giving this to others. And we have, you know, plenty, plenty of people that are going to continue to come around, you know. And so this is why we need to be the light. This is why we need to be the head. This is why you need to understand how this works. This is, this is the model for the church. And then camp meeting in January is going to be the greatest camp meeting that the world has ever seen because this is where the two streams come together to get the job done in the body of Christ. And you get to be a part of it. So now you go with an empowerment to take over in every single street and we will raise the biggest army of direct sales that the United States have ever seen. That's what we're going to do. Come on. You know, the world needs it. You know, we're going we're gonna to be part of a business school. We're going to have a business school that we're working with. You know, how is it going to work out and partner it up with, with the river? Because this, is, this, this needs to be integrated because ministers are going to be the ministry in, 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 in the fivefold ministry. And then there's going to be ministers in business. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to flow together. There's going to flow together, you know. And so, you know. We're excited about this. We're excited about what's about to happen, you know. We're, in, in January, we're going to be uh, the industry that I got, the industry that you could have thought that I failed at 
is the industry that I'm going to take over in January. We're going to do home automation next year, and we're going to add the home automation to every single sol you know, solar system, you know? Because, you know, I mean, really hearing, hearing you know, Pastor Rodney's heart, that was his heart. He said, I would have done it, but I knew I was called first to the ministry. And I'm just so happy that somebody's getting to do it. We were, they were going to do it. Pastor Rodney was going to start a home automation company back whenever they saw everybody by backsliding and, and everybody being taken out. That's what they were going to do. You know, they were going to be, there has to be a company that we raise up. But he said, I didn't do that because, uh, you know, Pastor Eric was so key to the operation that he was worried that that was going to take him away from what he was supposed to do. That's why he didn't do it. That's why he didn't do it, you know. And so, you know, man, so many things have been confirmed for me, man. So many things have been confirmed for me, you know, in all of this past years, you know, that I've been speaking, that I've been, you know, dreaming, that I've been seeing. But it's the Holy Ghost and fire entering into the marketplace. That's what it is. And we're going to march in with power, with firepower. Come on. Can you say amen? Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Masterclass podcast. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe for updates and all future content. For more information about Pastor Mike and Kingdom Masterclass, visit podcast.z5info.com.